Hi, Trish here in Tucson, Arizona, and we're gonna do another yoga for osteoporosis class today. We're gonna do all 12 poses with a couple extras, and we're gonna do a couple of the poses twice. So let's get started. We will be using our strap today. Probably don't need the blocks, but you might for Shavasana. Take a couple of deep breaths, really fill the body up and let the air all the way out. And feel how the body breathes, how it moves with the breath. And let's also add some arms to the breath. You can have your legs bent or your legs straight. We're just gonna lift the arms up for the inhale, reach them over the head and let them touch the floor. Exhale and let them float down. And we'll just do this two more times. Just starting to open up a little bit of muscle warmth in the back, the chest, the shoulders. Good. Maybe one more time. Good. This is just a little bit of warm up. We're going to pull the knees into the chest. You can hold on to them or you can let them go. You can rock a little bit. You might roll them around. And then we'll reach for our strap. You don't have to use a strap. You could use your hand on the back of your leg. You do want a little bit of resistance. So that is a way of creating weight bearing in the body is resistance. So here we go. We're gonna to start to push the right foot up in the strap. We're gonna let the left foot drop down. You might straighten it out. You might keep it bent. We're just gonna keep pushing into the strap. I'm gonna set the timer for 30 seconds and just see how it feels. You want a little bend in the knee, you want the back nice and long. There's sometimes a little bit of an arching in the low back. That's normal and good. You can even add a little pressure behind the head. You can gently press the back of the head into the floor. And this just lights up the energy all the way down your spine. And just keep breathing. One more breath. And then holding the strap with both hands, you'll take your foot up off the floor and slide it next to the foot in the strap. So now both legs are in the strap. And then you'll take the first leg down. So now the second leg is up. Left leg is up in the air. You'll start to push against the strap, pull gently down, and we'll start the 30 second time again. Noting the little curve in the back, the gentle pressure behind the head, maybe opening the chest a little bit. Nice. Any little places you can engage, you are strengthening. And when you strengthen, you, you squeeze the muscle to the bone and that helps build the bones. One more breath. And we're gonna switch legs again. Pick up the foot off the floor, slide it in. Take the first, that second leg down, good. So now it's right leg up again. I'm gonna keep my left knee bent and start to open my left leg out to the side. And you can start to open the left, the, the, I'm sorry, the right leg out to the side. The left knee bent can open up so that you can have a solid base across the low, low back. You want both hips to stay steady on the floor. So you're pushing now into the outer wide stretch. Keep breathing here, feeling the back again. You might even tip the tailbone down a little bit. This adds to the hamstring stretch. Nice. When we stretch the muscles, they pull on the bones, which helps to build that strength. The strength of not only the bones, but the muscles too. One more breath here. And we're gonna do a bonus pose. We're gonna lift the strap leg up and stretch out the bent knee that's on the floor. And then we'll start to bend the strap knee and roll it over the body. And you can keep the strap on the leg and straighten and bend the knee if you want to. We're turning into a twist, twisting over to the left. You can hold the strap in the left hand and open the right arm out. So you've got this really nice wide open twist. Deep breath. And then bending everything back to center, you can slide the other foot into the strap. So we'll do the other side. Your right knee now is bent with the foot on the ground and the strap leg starts to open wide and the knee, the bent knee opens wide as well to balance out the low back against the floor. It's not really the low back as much as it is the top of your glutes, way down 
by your tailbone. You want both sides of your buns to be balancing out on the floor. And that balancing is actually part of the work here, right up through the core, through the whole length of the spine. Pulling a little bit on the strap, pushing a little bit into the foot. Good. Lifting gently up. We can bend the knee a little bit as we cross it over. We can stretch the other leg down the mat to get it out of the way and just come into your twist. This is our bonus pose. We're gonna do a couple of bonus poses. I'll just let you know when that happens. So, so far we've done two of the 12 poses. The first is the strap leg up in the air and the second is the strap leg wide. Good, maybe another big breath here. And then rolling back onto the back, releasing the strap, just setting it aside. We've finished with that. We've finished with that tool. I'm just going to rock the knees a couple times, just trying to even out the sides of the body. You can take the arms over maybe or out wide. Just kind of coming back to neutral, swishing, rocking, soothing. We're going to move into bridge pose. I like to take my arms right down beside me. Walk the feet to a comfortable spot for your knees. And then you'll start to squeeze the shoulder blades back, slide them underneath you. Make sure there's nothing high under your head. It needs to be really flat. And begin to lift your hips, your buns off the floor. Lift as high as you like. You don't have to go too hard. We're gonna hold for 30 seconds at least. I'll tell you how long we're going, how long it's been. You can stay a little longer. You can also move up and down. You can add arm movement. But do try to keep your nose in the middle, <laughs> pointing up to the sky and not rolling side to side, just to keep the neck safe. If your knees hurt, walk your feet further down your mat or come out of the pose. Good, that's 30 seconds. If you'd like to stay a little longer, feel free. I'm just gonna keep going for a couple more breaths myself. That's 45 seconds. Feel free to stay if you like a little longer and I'll let you know when the full minute is up. And that is 60 seconds. As you come down, feel free to widen the arms, widen the legs, rock gently, just soothing again, coming back again and again to that neutralizing, resetting of the body. We're going to roll over onto our side now into what we call seed pose, S-E-E-D. And you can have the knees bent at any angle from your hips, any comfortable angle. The shoulders are stacked, the hips are stacked, knees and feet are stacked. I'm going to do some bonus work here also for the hips. This is clamshells, so we're just going to lift up and down. And you might count. I'm going to set a timer and just keep kind of feeling what's going on in your hip socket. We also want to try to maintain the stability of the, the upper glutes here right across the back. So if you put your hand on your hip, you can feel if it's moving back when you open and you don't want that to happen. You actually don't want to have any movement back and forth in the hip itself. You just want the up and down of the leg. Good. And that's 30 seconds of that variation. If you'd like, you can keep the thighs together and kick the top foot kind of up and back like a Charleston kick. And this is just rolling the hip the other way in the socket, internal rotation. It's just a nice counterbalance for that first movement. And here you don't have to worry about the low back moving. It's nice and stable. Good, some more deep breaths. And then we can try the last variation, which is the entire leg with the knee bent, lifting up and down. And it's not about getting it high, it's about feeling its weight in that hip socket. This is nice for building strength and bone of the hip. Yeah, and now here we are trying to maintain the stability of that full, full back. We want it to be still, as still as we can. And so the belly gets involved, we pull the core inward. Good. maybe another big breath. And 
And then you can stretch the leg out, reach down to the end of the mat, swing the leg back and forth a little. You can start to make really big circles. We're just, you can bend the knee, you can move forward and backward. We're just getting range of motion here. Good. And then we're gonna roll onto our stomach, stretching the legs, stretching the arms. And we're gonna move into a very optional plank pose. <laughs> If you want to do a little bit of plank, you can. I'm gonna do a knee and elbow plank. So I kind of walk my knees and elbows a little closer together so I can start to get my hips off the floor, belly off the floor. I'm gonna start the timer now. This, you could also be just down in your sphinx pose. You could be resting flat on your belly. You can lift your knees off the ground, you know, curled toes, whatever you'd like. You can come up to hands. We're just doing a little bit of extra core work here and just keep breathing. If the breath is difficult, that means you need a rest. So keep watching the breath. Just one more, in and out. And relax. Beautiful. I'm going to roll back onto my side, and I'm going to sit up and go to the other end of my mat for the other side of our clamshells. But you're welcome to just roll onto your other side, whatever you like. Now we're resting on the new side, seed, soft and relaxed in the hips and the knees and the feet. Everything is stacked up. Good. And we'll move into clamshells again. So the up and down of the knee, top knee, but the stable, steady hip. And just keep breathing. That deep inhale, exhale, the oxygenation of the blood and then the whole body is so important. The more fresh fluid and oxygen that we can get into our muscles and joints, the happier and healthier they will be. Good, if you'd like to switch variations, you can keep the thighs together, knees together, and just kick that top foot up and down, just to see how that feels. If you have little pops and cracks that happen that you don't like, you can do different movements here. You don't have to do the Charleston kick. But if you do have little cracks and pops and they don't bother you, there's no pain, then feel free to keep going. Maybe just that little smile, a little bit of gratitude for our hips ability to do this simple motion. And now if you'd like to do the final variation, you can keep the top knee bent and just lift the whole leg up and down. The full weight of the leg, this is weight bearing which helps to build the bone. And pull the belly in, try to stabilize, stack the hips. Good. Sometimes you can play with the position of the knee in the air. As it comes up, does it fall back behind this bottom knee or does it come straight above it? <laughs> a little bit of a challenge, good. And that's Enough of that, you can stretch the leg out, swing it around, bend and stretch, just move it around, good. And we're gonna get back on our stomachs. So getting back onto your face down position. And let's just take a moment here to reach forward, stretch extension. This is the one of the main principles or tenets or rules, if you will, of our yoga for osteoporosis, the stretching, strengthening, lengthening of the spine over and over again. If you'd like, you can rest your cheek or your forehead or chin on the floor as you start to slide your hands sideways into bent elbow position. They look like a cactus or a goal post. And if you're resting your head, that's good. You can lift your arms, just the weight of the arms off the floor. Then you can add the weight of the head then you can add the lift of the feet. And all of these are optional. I started the timer. We're gonna just be here for about 30 seconds. You're welcome to come in and out. You're welcome to straighten arms, bend knees, do, do just the upper body or just the lower. Breathe into your deep stretch and strengthening of the back of the body. So important for building the muscle of the spine, building the bone of the spine where Everything needs some strengthening. Good. One more breath. And relax. And let it all go. Feel free to rock your hips or take your arms down beside you and really let your shoulders slope. 
Nice. <laughs> and before we finish here, we're just going to come into a gentle back bend, bringing the elbows onto the floor in front of you. Hopefully it's gentle. You can make it more or less gentle by widening the arms or walking the hands forward. Let's just take two or three big breaths right down into that belly that's pushing against the floor. And then however you'd like to get up to your table pose, feel free. You can crawl your elbows or you can press your hands into the floor. We're just going to slowly come up. You might widen your knees and stretch back for a child's pose. Might, might be an option for you. Nice deep breath. Perfect. And then coming to your hands and knees just for a moment for tabletop and cat and cow. So sweet for the spine to just get extra fluid flowing through it, getting into the front and the back sides of the vertebrae and all those beautiful nerves and tendons and everything that wraps us up. <laughs> Good, let's take another big breath. And we will start to stand up and you can do that any way you like. I like to do a little down dog, feel free, that's an option. You're gonna watch the low back or the mid back. You're gonna make sure that you feel the stretch and then begin to lift the head. No rounding as you rise. Just lift up nice and straight and tall. Perfect. And then we're just gonna swing the hips around some little hula hoops just to get ourselves into our standing up body. <laughs> and then we'll walk up toward the front of the mat, right up toward the top short edge and stand tall for a moment. Sweep the arms forward and upward for a full extension. Lean back a little bit, feel the reach through the fingers and then sink into chair pose. And you can keep the back straight at first to feel the calf stretch. Then you can lean chest forward, hips slide back into more of a skiing position. You can always keep your hands on your thighs. You can take your arms off your legs if you'd like. I'm actually going to time this pose and just play with the 30 second time frame here. You might rock a little, you might straighten and bend more. Feeling the work in those thighs, they are squeezing the bones of the femurs, keeping them strong, healthy. If it's hard on the knees, you can straighten them out a little more. If it feels okay to go deeper, that's fine. If you want to widen your feet, good. And just one more inhale, exhale. And we're going to rise up. This time the arms can go wide apart and lift upward. Perfect. Bringing the hands down beside you, you can slide your right leg back in its track, directly back on the mat so you don't get behind the front foot on the line of that front heel. Good. <laughs> Bend the front knee. Don't let it go past your toes. Straighten into the back leg, hips side by side. So pull that back leg hip right into a line with the front hip, then lean forward, lengthen the spine as you do this. Reach through the crown of the head. You can add your arms straight up or maybe out to the sides and start to twist from the middle of the body over to the left toward that front leg. This is the pose. If you wanted to straighten the knee, you could. That would be full revolve triangle. I like this variation of warrior one twist but keep lengthening up through the crown, long neck, shoulders slide down the body. You're welcome to cross the arm to the thigh. We only have one more breath in 30 seconds. And release and step forward and just take a break. Resting is a very important part of exercise. There are two main components of all exercise. There's the stress and the rest. Okay, let's try the other side. Reach up nice and tall, big openness. Let the hands come down, start to bend the knees and slide the left leg back, drop the heel. Make sure your feet are on separate tracks, like skis, not a snowboard. <laughs> bend into the front knee, press into the back heel, align the hips side by side, lean slightly forward into the length of the back leg, good. Then you can take the arms forward, upward, outward, and begin to twist toward the front leg. Yes. Keep on breathing, long, long spine. But as you come into the length of your spine, push back down into your heels. Good. 
couple more breaths. You're doing it. Good. One more. And you'll turn slowly and step forward. And just take a moment. Take a little walk around. Let your hips feel the swing of the walking step, the bend in the knees. Good. I don't know if I have to say this out loud, but you can definitely have a wall, a chair, a table, something next to you to have stabilizing. <laughs> Good job, I see that. <laughs> Very smart. Because when we have osteoporosis, one of the greatest fears is falling. So to, in order to be within the safety framework and begin to strengthen, we need that support. Okay, let's start to step the feet wide apart. Just take the breath up and down the spine. Maybe sweep the arms wide. You can always just have a hand on the surface that you're support, that's supporting you if you need to. Good. And we're gonna slowly start to turn the right toes out and then bend the knee. Now here, the feet are on the same track, right? But if you needed to have a wider base for support, you could scoot the front foot back out of alignment with the back foot so it's a little wider opening. Good, we're gonna open the arms really wide so that we add the weight of the arms. You can always hold weights in your hands here to just add to the strength that you're creating in your body. And everything is lifting up. There's this beautiful center line in this pose. And then there's these beautiful like star shining brilliantly outward. Good, just a few more breaths. And the hips are slightly open. They're kind of, it's a little bit of a twist, right? And then lower the hands down. Straighten that knee and see about turning the toes forward. You might automatically step together. You might not. Just take your time. We're going to take a pause between sides. Deep breath. And start to turn the left foot out, stepping the feet wide apart first, of course. Bend into that left knee and see how the hips kind of start to turn toward the front foot. That's okay, you can let them do that. Keep the back leg nice and long and straight, but then open the heart as you stretch the arms out of right above the feet, breathing up through the crown, lifting up. Maybe the shoulders kind of slide back onto the back of the body, which is where they belong. Good. You can look down at the floor ahead of you or straight at the horizon or to challenge your balance, you can look upward a little bit. Nice. You can also turn the head side to side. All those little things can add to the balance of work, which is another kind of the side job of these poses is to keep us balancing and keep our systems going. Good. Lowering the arms, straightening the knee. Let's step all the way together at this time between the sides. Good. Might just take some circles, some hula hoops, bending the knees, getting the fluid flowing through the legs. And then we'll step the legs apart. We still have two more really big wide angle poses. So we'll just pause with the feet wide apart, feel the length upward, turning the right foot out again, bending into the right knee taking the arms out wide, we're building our warrior two, and then we're gonna add on to it by leaning toward the bent knee, maybe bending the arm and bringing the forearm to the thigh or pressing the back of the hand on the inside of the knee. The arms are always kind of optional, creative points of the pose. Please keep lengthening your neck. Don't allow your head to dip too much. Bring the head into alignment with the spine. So it's a full, beautiful line of energy from your nose to your toes. Good. Another deep breath. Press into your heels. And rise up. Nice and slow. You can step together or pause for a moment between the sides. Just let the breath settle. And the other side is there for you. When you're ready, you'll turn the new foot out, left foot out, bend into the knee. Open the heart, stretch the arms out. So this is your alignment as if you're leaning back on an invisible wall. Then you start to lean toward the bent knee. You can rest the forearm on the thigh or take the back of the hand to the inner knee and kind of press them together. Arms always optional, beautiful opening. Just keep breathing. Can 
kind of feel the shaking in the body, knowing that you're strong. You're creating strength. And then slowly stand up. Turn the feet and step the legs together. We want to give our hips just a little bit of a rejuvenation moment between these big, big poses so that we have some time to rehydrate the joints. Make sure we drink lots of water. I know when it's hot, we get thirsty faster, which is good, but we still have to drink more. Okay, this is our last really big wide angle pose, triangle. We're gonna step the feet wide apart. And this is a place where you can push yourself if you want to. Go a little farther if you need to or think you're safe to. That little bit of pushing can actually create strength. We're gonna turn the right foot out. And you could stay here with both legs long and just reach out over the right foot or you can bend the right knee, lean to the side, make sure that top shoulder stays toward the back of the body. Then you can straighten the leg and lean into your triangle. The other arms are all just options wherever you want to put them. Just make sure that you're not pushing on your knee joint, that it is loose, that you can kind of bend and straighten it. So the work is here through the core, both sides. The, the addition of the weight of the arms is sometimes welcome. Just keep reaching the neck out. Don't let it lean too far to one side. Lift it up into the line of the spine. Perfect. And rise up. And turn those forward and we're getting a little bit tired or so if you need to step together feel free good it's kind of nice to feel the body get tired just a little bit good tiredness <sighs> beautiful and then we turn the left foot out take your time turning the leg bending into the knee now remember, you could start from the straight leg and lean into your triangle there, sliding that left hand out, or you can bend the knee, lean to the side, and then straighten the leg, which I really like because it, of the way that it opens this inner leg a little bit. You can add the arms. And as you're reaching through the arms, really reach. So there's this center point in the middle of the chest that's opening up. And the weight bearing of the arms is settling into the spine, the, the neck, the shoulder girdle, the middle and lower spine all have the bit to have to help bear the weight of our arms. Good, and another big breath. Good. Lower the arms, straighten up and step together. You might roll your head a little bit. You might hold on to your support and tuck your toes under and roll the feet a little. You can press into the ball of the foot. And swing the knee a little we're just stretching into the foot a little bit it's nice while we've got good circulation in the feet because we're standing on them we can really move that all the little fluids kick the feet a little bit we're moving toward our one-legged stance our tree pose so always having something next to you for your standing on one leg and we're just going to lean into the long standing leg but then we're going to bend the knee we're going to unlock the standing knee the other knee can open up Maybe the toes rest on the floor, the ball of the foot, or maybe your foot walks up your leg. And as you're coming into the pose, make sure that that right hip doesn't swing too far, I mean, whichever hip <laughs> doesn't swing out. Pull it inward and upward. Good, and I'll start the timer. I'm gonna give us a full minute, because we can come in and out of the pose. We can play with letting go of our support, tapping back into it. There's a lot of different lines of energy that you can practice here. There's the up and down lift and press, good. There's the opening across the heart, squeezing of the shoulder blades. There's the stretching up of the neck. Anything else you'd like to add? That's 30 seconds. Now also you can press the foot against the leg, the standing leg, and press the standing leg into the foot, which creates more resistance, more strengthening through the hips. Good. Watch the flow of the breath. Feel the wobble and know you are alive. If you're staying for the full minute, take one more breath. And relax. Come on out, maybe swing your legs a little. 
Sometimes it feels good to take a slide forward and stretching into that low back. These poses really work the low back, so it can be really tired at the end of this practice. So as it tires more and more, you'll just be more gentle. Now we're going to lean into the new leg, unlock the knee, open the other knee, open wide, perfect. <laughs> and then you'll straighten up into your pose your standing pose. Sometimes it's nice to do tree pose with your back against a door or a wall. Simply standing on one leg has so many benefits. Of course balance. The balance computer in your brain and in your feet and in your whole body is lighting up. But also you're bearing the weight of your entire body on the bones of that standing leg. And that's a huge benefit for osteoporosis. We've been here for 30 seconds. Keep going if you want to. Feeling the breath, feeling the lift, feeling the core pulling inward, upward. Two more breaths or maybe one giant one. I know I let us go for a full minute. There you go. <laughs> Take your time, moving your legs, bending your knees. Beautiful. And before we go back down, we're gonna go through the three big standing poses one more time in a little gentle flow, just to feel them again. Now that we have them in our bones, we're gonna spread the feet apart. Just take a, take a moment to feel the uprightness in your spine. You can even kind of put your hands together right over your belly, slide them up, to the sky and down. Yeah, so you feel the lengthening of the body here. Good. And then we'll take the hands out wide and turn the right foot out. Take a moment as you bend the knee to feel the warrior two energy, just one breath. Knee over ankle, press into the feet. Good, start to lean toward the bent knee. Lean in this time for sure. Lean into the forearm on the thigh, reach through the back arm, maybe take it over your head for another deep breath. Come slowly up out of the bent knee, but keep your body leaning in that direction so you're straightening into triangle pose. Keep squeezing the glutes, squeezing the belly, strong strength. One more big breath here. And release. And turn the head forward, turn the toes forward. Maybe roll a little, hip to hip, knee to knee, good. And then you'll turn the other foot out. Bend into the knee, sweep the arms wide for warrior two. So it's just a tapping in, just a feeling into the energy of this beautiful pose. Feeling that gentle twisting that happens, good. Start to lean into the bent knee when you're ready. And maybe add the upper arm. Nice big breath. Beginning to straighten out the knee, you'll lift your torso a little bit to come up out of that, not overstretching. A deep breath here, triangle. And come on up, turn those toes, and walk the feet together. Well done. <laughs> we are going to slowly have a seat on the floor. So I'm gonna walk through down dog, child's pose, and then seated, but if you wanna just squat or sit down, that's fine. And we're gonna just take a moment to transition. You could even sit in a chair for this, <laughs> these next two poses. So we're just gonna end up. I like to sit on a blanket. I'm, all, I'm always sitting on a little cotton blanket here. As you sit upright, this is our posture pose called staff pose or dandasana. You can just kind of roll the shoulders a little bit, push them forward and back. Good. Upright, nice tall spine. You're welcome to use a block or straps, anything you like. I'm just gonna do it with no props at first. I'm gonna start to slide one leg into a bent position. And then I'm gonna take my hand on that side and walk my butt cheek back a little bit. And as I do that, I'm turning into my twist. So you'll, let me just repeat that. You'll 
bend your knee, walk that hip back, and that opens up the twist. And then if you're kind of hunching forward, lift upward, and maybe even backward, and feel your shoulders slide down into your sleeves. Yes, as if your shirt is hanging on a hanger. Good, and the head goes either way. You can go one way for a while, then the other. You're just gonna keep breathing. You might let the leg go further away from you if it feels too squished. You might pull it in a little bit. You don't wanna to pull too hard. You wanna do pretty gentle twists. Twisting can be very strengthening, but also a little stressful for the spine. And that's 30 seconds on that side. Go ahead and turn forward, slide the hips back side by side, straighten out the legs, take a breath, maybe a little rock. And then the other knee, bend it up, take the hand and walk that butt cheek back. So what happens is the long leg starts to kind of push forward, good. Lifting up into the spine. So this beautiful lift creates the energy of the twist and then we add a little bit of pull, just a gentle pull. Some teachers for osteoporosis will not even tell you to hold on to anything. They'll ask you to use the strength of your actual spine to twist you rather than your arms. Because sometimes we can overdo that tug. Good, just one more breath, tall spine. And turning forward nice and straight in the legs. Good, take a little bit of side to side. And we're gonna do, that was our first seated twist. We'll do the second variation now. You can wiggle your toes, rock your head a little bit. We're gonna bend the first knee again, and then we're gonna kind of take the long leg and push it on a diagonal so we can cross the foot over it. And this is the pose. You could also tuck the bottom leg under, coming into kind of a higher, a deeper, both hips. But I like just one leg crossed, and I'm not gonna walk the hips back for this one, and I'm not gonna touch my legs. So I'm gonna turn myself and then I'm gonna lean back and I'm actually gonna kind of lift up with the top of the front arm so that the twist is happening kind of more on its own because this is a very locked in twist because we didn't move the hips, they are holding the base of the spine in one direction and we're turning through the middle. Good, feel how that's a little difficult to breathe. Nice. <laughs> Slowly turn forward and uncross the leg. Nice, good job. Flop the feet a little bit and then we'll try the other side. The knee bends, the leg kind of moves halfway across, cross over. Feel the hips, they're locked side by side. Now the arms can twist toward that bent knee. And lean back, yeah. Perfect. Again, this is such a nice open chest, open heart, long spine twist. You can play with your neck. And then slowly on one, and just come back to a nice tall position, bending the knees. Good, and we're gonna do a little bonus pose. We're gonna do our butterfly for osteoporosis. So this is a very engaged butterfly. We're not gonna round the back at all. In fact, I'll turn sideways so you can see this. I like to hook onto my shins, but you, we're also gonna take the hands behind us at one point. So first get nice and tall, start to press the soles of the feet together just gently, maybe 10% pressure, not a lot, just so you can feel there's a little bit of energy between them. Then begin to lower the knees outward and you're not gonna let them touch the floor. Of course, they're not gonna touch the floor. They're just gonna the energy of pressure downward. Take the hands back behind you, Open the heart and reach up through the head as you squeeze the shoulder blades back and just maintain all these little energies for the next couple of breaths. Soles of the feet together, knees opening wider, tailbone pressing down, heart lifting up, head reaching up for pre hands pressing down. <laughs> Good, one more breath. And then just roll your knees over to one side. Just roll onto one side, do that gentle twist to that side, and then roll your knees to the other side. All the way, turn and twist, beautiful. And then turn long ways on your mat, just turn so that your feet are ready to stretch down the mat. And we're gonna just talk about this curve of the spine. This low back curve can sometimes be a place of weakness, but it's more that this upper back 
curve here that we are want to worry about for osteoporosis. So every time we sit down, we roll the shoulders back, lengthen the spine up. And then to lay back, you can either roll to your sides to, to safely lie down, or you can just keep your spine long and tall, walk your elbows to the floor, keep your spine long, don't let it sag, feel the work in the core, widen the elbows, and lay the whole back down flat and maybe bring the knees into the chest and rock gently side to side. Beautiful. And then we're just gonna move through our original poses one more time, just gently. So without a strap this time, just let one leg come to the floor. Let's lift the right leg up in the air. And we're going to actually push on the front of the leg to strengthen and just stabilize the hip. Push through the heel, a little bit of pressure between the front of the leg and then the leg and the hand. Good. Keep breathing. Couple more breaths. We want to hold for about a count of five. And then release. Let the knee bend. Let the foot come down. Rock a couple times side to side. Just quick. And then the other leg, left leg goes up in the air. We're going to push against the leg. Let the leg push against the hand. Count five. One, two, three, four, and five. And we're just going to do that two more times on each side. Just do your own count if you'd like. Leg comes up. We push. Resist. <laughs> and then the other leg. This is also really good for stabilizing the SI joint, the sciatica, just to strengthen up the hips. Good. One more time on each side. Press and release and press. Beautiful. Okay. Again, now just rocking the hips, rocking the knees side to side. I'd like to get onto our stomach one more time. So you can get there however you want. You can roll upward coming onto hands and knees and then down onto your stomach. You can roll over. Just want to play just for a moment since we have the time here. I'm going to play with the upper shoulders. So nice and long through the feet. Good. You can take your arms again into your cactus position or bent elbows. Elbows right in line with the shoulders. If you have any shoulder issues, you're just going to let that shoulder rest. You don't have to do both arms. Good, let's just lift the head. Let the tops of the feet touch the floor, lengthen them a little further down the mat. So reaching, reaching good. Let the weight of the head, kind of starting the work in the middle between the shoulder blades. This is the part of the back that we're trying to strengthen and straighten out this upper back. Start to let the elbows float off the floor and squeeze the shoulders together. Your elbows might actually kind of sweep sideways down toward your ribs. You can actually slide fingers forward to tap ahead of you and then squeeze the elbows back. Good. A couple of more times. This is the work here. We're almost done. And then if you'd like to add the legs, you can actually fold your hands, rest your head, and just press into your pubic bone and lift those feet, the knees off the ground, strengthening the middle and lower back. Nice. <laughs> That's a lot of work. Okay. One more breath and then letting it all go. Hmm. Let's just roll onto one side for a moment. Stay on the edge of your body, legs really long. So this is the, a little side lying balance and play with that hand in front of you. You can have it on the floor to support you or you can take it over the head for full side stretch. Yeah, just see how it feels. Nice deep breath. And then we're gonna roll back on the stomach and over to the other side. Just slowly to see what it feels like to wobble on this other side. Nice work. Rolling back onto your stomach. We are going to get onto our back. 
So again, you could push up to table, you can roll around on the floor, whatever you like. This kind of movement on the floor, especially, is quite good for the body to have to use different parts of your spine, your shoulders, your hips, your head to move you into a position that you want to get to, that transitioning is part of the fun. <laughs> good. Maybe rock the knees a couple times, knees bent. And we're going to take one leg out wide and we're going to just hold, hold on to it. You can grab the ankle, you can grab your pants, you can grab a toe, you can use a strap. And we're just going to stretch into the pose, reach through the leg, open the hips. The other knee can be bent so you have a balance across the upper, the upper butt. <laughs> Good. A couple more breaths. Releasing that leg and switching to the other. So grabbing hold, you want to hold onto it somewhere, grabbing the leg or something. So you're getting a little pulling and pushing action. Yeah, mostly pulling. <laughs> Good, more, a couple more breaths. And lowering down, letting the body sway. Good. We're gonna do a couple of twists and then we're gonna end with our supported bridge pose. So let's, let's do a hip scooting twist where we take the hips, the legs, and slide them over to the right edge of the mat. So the right edge of my hip is touching or even falling off of the right edge of my mat. So I just got my spine on an angle. Then the, leg, the knees are gonna to roll together over to the left edge of the mat. And hopefully the spine just rolled right back into alignment with itself, right up through the neck. Good. This is our called hip twist or reclining twist. Good. The head could rock a little. You can take some deep breaths. You could actually stretch the legs out and like hover them above the floor. Just really hard work here right at the end. Or you can just keep the knees bent and soft. <laughs> Good. Let's take one more full round of breathing. Inhale and exhale. Rolling the legs up. Scoot the hips to the middle of the mat just for a moment. Lengthen up through the crown of the head. Even walk your shoulders a little further away from your hips. Scoot them up the mat. Then you're going to scoot your hips to the left edge, right to the edge. And let the knees go to the right. Three or four big breaths. You can stretch out the legs. Have fun with that. Beautiful. Maybe another deep breath. And the knees roll up and the hips scoop back to center. So nice. Rocking those knees side to side. And we're gonna take a block and slide it under our hips for supported bridge. You can kind of walk the shoulders back up the mat. If you don't have a block, don't worry about it. You can use a blanket, a pillow. You could just have your hips flat on the floor and you can lift your hips if you wanna do a little more work. This is just a more restful way of practicing our bridge pose. It's a nice inversion to get the fluid draining down the legs. You can also lift the legs up in the air, and you can do this up a wall if that feels good, or you can do it across a chair or just up in the air. You can slide your hands under your hips to get the hips up a little bit. We're just gonna let the fluid drain down the legs. You can roll through the ankles, wiggle the toes. Nice. Just let them float. Let everything start to float away. If it, feels like too much pressure in your head, feel free to get off your block. If you kind of like the pressure, enjoy it. <laughs> Perfect. You can feel free to bend the knees and let the feet come down to the floor. Good. And you can slide the block out. And as your hips come to the ground, just settle into your Shavasana. 
We have about eight minutes left probably. And we're gonna just rest, we're really gonna breathe deep. This is such an important part. The Shavasana is actually included in the 12 poses because of how important it is on so many different levels. First of all, we have to rest. The body has to let go in order to begin to move into what we call rest and restore. And I'm just gonna sit up and talk a little bit while you're resting. So the rest and digest system in the body is what gets turned off when we're in stress. So when you're in fight, flight, or freeze, your body literally turns off the digestive system, the immune system, a lot of other little systems get kind of put on pause. And so when we're out of the stress for long enough, like a yoga class, or a good long shavasana of at least 10 minutes, the body says, ah, I can start to turn those systems back on again. And it's so important, so important for our overall health. And then on other levels, shavasana is challenging. It's challenging to be still, to simply breathe. It's challenging to be with our thoughts the worries and the plannings and the stories that we tell ourselves repeatedly. And it's also a powerful opportunity to feel your breath, to be fully present with your breath and your body. The mind time travels, but the body is always present. The breath is always now. And um, Thich Nhat Hanh says that there is no more tomorrow. There's no more yesterday, sorry. And there also is no tomorrow, it doesn't exist yet. There is only today. And this is the most important day of our lives. And so is this breath, and the next breath, and this moment, in and out, ever present, ever mindful of the now. Working with the stillness, the rhythm of the breath. And then I love to end our yoga for osteoporosis with gratitude practice. And it is a practice. We are not perfect at this thing called gratitude. So of course, think of the good things in your life. Start with that. <laughs> I love to take a breath in and with every exhale say another Thing I'm grateful for. And then if you'd like to go a little further along the practice of gratitude, think of something that you've done recently that you are proud of, that you are glad. I know there's so many things that we wish we hadn't done, but think of something that you did, even if it's so simple as remembering to turn on the dishwasher. <laughs> and just offer a little bit of gratitude for that good that you created in this world, in this world that needs so much goodness. Feel free to think of a couple of things, a couple of times that you responded or acted in a way that you are glad of. And say good job to yourself. And then of course, you can keep going. Something that someone else has done for you or said to you that you are grateful for, that you appreciate. Maybe it's simply love that you feel from your cat. <laughs> it's all worthy. It's all worthy of gratitude for sure. And then we move into a little more difficult part of gratitude, which is acknowledging that not everything is so good, but that it's still part of being human, part of our lives, and we can actually offer gratitude for the challenges, for the struggles, confusion, and doubt, because it is part of who we are, part of what it is to be alive. We can be grateful for the issues that other people bring, 
<laughs> into our lives. And we might even send them love and care, any kind of praying that you like to do, just sending good wishes or actually asking a deity to watch over. And then just that final gratitude for everything, for the good and the bad, for the hard and the good and the easy. Just taking deep breaths, feeling the gratitude in your heart, gratitude for your body, gratitude for your life. And we'll just take a few more deep breaths together. starting to open the eyes and look around, just becoming very present to the walls around you, the ceiling and the floor. Starting to move gently and slowly back into your joints again. Feeling the steadiness of the breath, a little bit of tiredness, a little bit of, if you were sweating a little bit, that coolness that comes after. Hopefully you have a fan on. <laughs> and we can just end with sitting up and maybe our hands just resting on the lap or hands together at the heart. And we really just bow to that desire inside of us to be healthy. And we say yes to it every day. Thank you so much and have a beautiful rest of your day. Mm -hmm.